Hi, I'm Lois Sonstegard, and today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about Mihai Cheeksent Mihai, who has written a marvelous book called Flow. It is research that he's done talking with people all over the world about happiness, for example. What makes you or creates happiness? And he's found that there are some distinguishing characteristics. So ever wondered why some people are happy and some people aren't? Have you ever wondered about what makes some people so frustrated that they seem to have no meaning or purpose in their lives? Or why others seem to feel so fully alive all the time? Well, Cheek Sent Me High tells us that the answer is inside yourself, myself, ourselves, and is experienced when you are going with the flow. Mihai tells us that in our distracted, anxious lives, we often are too focused on external rewards and opinions, and so we limit ourselves to external factors. When we're in flow, on the other hand, we feel fully alive. When you sing, dance, do sports. In dancing, sometimes don't you find that you just get lost in the event and the world and time seems irrelevant. Same thing with singing sometimes or sports. People tell us that a lot as they become competitive in sports or are trying to break a record or are stretching themselves. It can also happen when you're reading a good book or you're lost in a wonderful conversation. So what is flow? Flow is that state in which people are so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The experience itself is so enjoyable that people will do it even at great cost, just for the sheer sake of doing it. Flow allows us to control our inner life, our inner minds, thereby it increases our happiness level. Mihai tells us that a person can make himself happy or miserable regardless of what is actually happening outside by just changing the contents of the mind. Isn't that amazing? Flow allows us to master our own destiny and it can happen wherever we let it happen, whether it's at work, at home, or with our families. We often create mechanisms to protect from what appears to be a meaningless and indifferent world. We want to protect ourselves, don't we? So here are some of the ways that we go about doing that. Sometimes we use our belief system to protect us, to keep a distance, to reevaluate. We may also invest in luxury items to hide from the world around us. In doing this, we may be trying to change the environment around us, the problem is that because these experiences are external to us, they do not tend to sustain us or sustain our happiness long term. A second mechanism we may use is our need for gratification. It's a simple pleasure. Often this causes us to act in response to a present moment rather than something else. So for example, when we feel that first twinge of hunger, we may grab a cookie or something else. Then we experience a dip in our energy and our pleasure disappears. If on the other hand, we acted out of the need for what Mihai calls enjoyment, we would stretch ourselves and transcend that immediate and initial need for gratification. We're then able to gain control of ourselves and we control our focus. A third mechanism we use is to develop personal rewards so that we can challenge ourselves to new skills. So you can say to yourself, you know what? When I accomplish this, I'm gonna go on a trip. I'm gonna go out for dinner. I'm gonna go visit with a friend. I get to take time to play sports or to do whatever it is that you identify, but there's a reward there that you give yourself. Fourth, be disciplined about becoming more aware of everything around you, nature, music, the sound of birds, the feel of the wind on your skin. This mindfulness enables you to unlock and control your mind and it's so simple. Use memories to cultivate focus on complex ideas, not your flaws. Use your memory to stimulate your mind, not to shrink your mind. Turn work into fun experiences, make it a game, and enjoy it so that every morning 
there's something exciting that you want to wake up and accomplish. Engage family, friends, community for an increased self-expression and growth. As your attention becomes increasingly focused, amazingly, anxiety decreases in a new perspective of ourselves, our world, and our environment emerges. Discover purpose in life through having fulfilled goals and resolving to put goals into action. So the benefits sound so terrific. How do we do this? How do we get into the flow? Well, Mihai tells us that there are four conditions to create the state of flow. First, focus your attention on the task at hand. Decrease all of the stimuli that are impacting you and disrupting you in your environment. The focus or concentration is like breathing. Just take it in and let it out. Once you engage in it, you don't think about it. Second, free yourself from self-scrutiny. Once you're in flow, there's no room for self-scrutiny. Trust your ability to solve problems. Work without judgment for short periods of time if long periods are too challenging. Let go of your fear and disbelief that you can actually accomplish this. It's giving yourself permission to move, to move ahead. Third, seek feedback. We need constant feedback as human beings. Gallup found in their research that without feedback, People are 98% disengaged. And so fourth condition for entering the state of flow, match the need that you have for challenge with your skill set. There needs to be a balance between the challenge you want to engage in and your ability to successfully complete the activity. If you want the challenge but don't have the skill set, then acquire the skill set through focus and mastery, learning, having somebody teach it to you. If you're feeling like you would like to increase your happiness quotient, you may need to refocus and get into the flow. As you do, you will notice that anxiety will decrease and you will feel a new sense of calm and readiness to take on new challenges.